Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about red rot and why it is misdiagnosed so often and just how rare it actually is. Hint, it doesn't happen that often. So first of all, brass instruments made out of brass. These are non-ferrous materials, meaning there's no iron present in basically any part, maybe like springs are made out of spring steel. Probably the only part on here that's actually made out of anything that has to do with iron at all. So brass does not rust. If you see it's red, that's for a totally different reason. It is not rust. Rust does make iron and steel just kind of go away. It's a bad thing. It's not going to happen to your brass instrument. It's never rust. It never is. But those of, uh, those of you who actually know, know that brass does have its own thing called red rot. And it's a little more complicated, much less common, and uh, just a lot of people lately seem to think it's happening to their horns, and almost every single time, it's not. So let's talk about it real quick. I've talked about the composition of brass before, but basically brass is zinc and copper put together, right? Um, yellow brass has the least amount of copper and the most amount of zinc. And as they get more red in color, so gold brass has more copper, red brass has even more copper, and guess what? Copper bells? Just copper. Just a little bit of other stuff in there. So the more yellow it is, the more zinc it has in it. And red rot is the de-zincification of brass. So over time, with the right kind of chemical mix, the right bacteria, the right amount of water being left in a spot, the zinc will leach out of the brass due to this chemical process that is complicated and I'm not going to fully explain, but the zinc kind of disappears and leaves behind the copper. There's still 80% copper here, right? And there's only 20% zinc. And so that copper still has some structure. It has like a lattice, but it's not nearly as strong with the zinc gone. And so over a long period of time, you'll have just like a little copper spot. It'll appear like a black or red hole. And if you poke it really hard, you'll make a hole. It'll just actually not seal anymore. It'll be a hole. That's called the, that's kind of like the worst case for red rot, is an actual hole appearing and then your horn just kind of isn't a complete horn anymore because there's stuff missing from it. Now let's talk about it. Uh, red rot only happens with yellow grass because that's the most uh, zinc content of any of the stuff we're talking about. And so it can only happen to yellow brass tubes or parts or whatever. Nickel? No, it's not going to happen. Nickel silver is a totally different material. It does not get red rotted. Red brass, gold brass, just doesn't happen. That's why on some like trumpets and things like that, you'll see the lead pipes are actually made out of gold brass or rose brass typically because they know that that's not going to red rot nearly as fast or if ever compared to a yellow brass lead pipe. So the only thing you have to worry about is yellow brass. Then you have to realize that it's really only going to happen to parts of the horn where stuff is going to collect and sit for a long period of time. So maybe if you have yellow brass valve knuckles, little like crooks at the bottom of attachment tubing, a lot of times it'll be a slide crook or a slide tube somewhere down here. Those are really the only spots that are going to red rot. Something like a bell isn't like soaked in water, doesn't have like bacteria just sitting on it for long periods of time. It's simply not going to red rot. You could probably leave a bell outside plugged up at the bottom for like decades and it would not red rot. It would just kind of be gross. Um, it has to be the right kind of conditions. All the right things have to happen. And then maybe it red rots. A lot of times people will you know, post pictures of maybe even a slide tube, maybe even some, an area like here, and it'll be kind of reddish colored. That's just the oxidation of brass. If you take the lacquer off of brass and the right conditions happen, it turns red. That is not red rot. Red rot is going to appear as like little tiny holes. At most, it'll be like, you know, thumb size or something. That'd be like the worst possible case. And it'll be in a spot like a slide crook or an attachment tube or something like that. In my long history of owning instruments, gone through a lot of horns, I don't think I've ever actually seen red rot on a single one. Even the ones that are most likely to have red rot, which is like 
Edwards from a certain period, some Yamaha horns like to red rot more often than other things. I've still never seen any. I live in a place where red rot's a little less likely. It's drier here, even though the ocean's not too far away. There's not that much, the conditions are not perfect for red rot to happen. And I've still just never seen it. And I've owned a gajillion horns and I've gone through even more that I have not owned. So if you have that question, is this red patch on my bell red rot? No. Odds are it's probably not. You can still ask. I'm not going to like be mad that people are worried about their instruments, but almost every single time it's not going to be red rot. And best part is, even if it is, your horn will still function as an instrument for like 10 more years. It's going to take a long time for that red rot to actually get all the way through the brass, the thickness of these walls of tubes, and form a hole. Because you need a hole for it to actually not work anymore. And so even if you have these symptoms of red brass, people will find it on their slide tubes or whatever. They're like, oh, i got to get this replaced. I mean, you can. There's nothing stopping you. But that slide tube is going to work as a slide tube for a long time before it ceases to just actually function at all. So really, you don't need to worry about red rot. Unless you live in like a certain place, you have a certain body chemistry, and your horns are entirely yellow brass, and maybe they're like Edwards or something. You just don't have to worry about it. Um, I only bring this up because I've seen like 20 people ask on like Reddit and Discord, is this red rot? And I don't think a single case of them has been so far. Maybe one. And that's it. Every other one has been. Another common one, just before I forget, and of course this one doesn't seem to have any, is acid bleed. Um, when you solder a bell rim, there's a steel wire, which is one of the only ferrous parts on a trombone, steel wire under this bell rim, and they curl the bell over that, and on a soldered bell, they solder the whole thing together. Some bells are not soldered. They just curl it over and leave it. On a soldered bell, they, they do solder it, and sometimes, the, due to whatever, the solder will kind of leach out, and it'll make what looks like it could be red rot, just kind of like nasty looking patches around the bell rim. That's just acid bleed and it is tire, entirely cosmetic. It doesn't do anything. Your bell's not about to like punch through or anything. It doesn't do a single thing. That's kind of like the last thing that looks like red rot. So all in all, don't worry about it. It's not going to happen. Um, and thankfully, yeah, this horn also doesn't have any red rot. This is my new 50B2, this is my sixth Bach 50B2. I think I've had more of these than any other trombone. That's all I got for today. Bye-bye.